Hey guys, it's Chris and Christy from Turner Max Adventures. So we've had several requests for us to show what we carry in the storage compartment of the Max. So we're gonna drag all of our stuff out and show you what we carry in the bottom part of our Max. And then we're gonna try to fit it all back in there again. <laughs> so we'll show you the must haves. Also, if you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button if you wanna see more details about the Max and about our adventures. All right, so you saw us uh, unload everything, so now I'm gonna try to fit everything back in here and we'll see how that goes. And tell you a little bit about it as we're, as we're doing it. Um, one of the things that we have, and I'll be honest with you, I haven't even used it yet, but it's more for emergencies. In case I need to get up on top of the camper, right? We, have a, we did get a, a collapsible ladder. This is a 10 foot ladder, so it'll reach up to the top really easily. I mean, I've used it to get up there, but never, never while we were out camping. And so because of that, I usually put it on the bottom and it just slides right in and I'll go over the other side I'll go over the driver's side and the rest of the stuff that's in there in a little bit okay so we have two of these uh, hefty green bins I think I got these at Walmart or Lowe's um, and so we have two of those that are in there and you'll see we really don't have a whole lot in the in these but just real quick I was just gonna show you what we do have and a lot of this kind of stuff is just patio kind of outdoor stuff right we've got a tablecloth we use these, these are Walmart just uh, spring clamps. These are our tablecloth holders to keep them from blowing away. So we have four of those. Um, we have some citronella candles. We have this thermocell mosquito stuff that we use and it works pretty well along with the citronella candles, that kind of thing. We have some grill supplies, um, a lighter, some things to clean the grill with. There's a hammer and some stakes for our uh, rug that we put out right over here. Um, a couple of skewers if we're cooking by campfire. And that's about it, honestly. There's not a whole lot that we have in there. And so one of the things to keep in mind though, the way that we camp, whenever we go, we're vacationers. So we're not full-timers at all. And so because we're vacationers, we have, I mean, we're going some, we're going to a destination where we're going to see stuff. And then we're spending all day gone seeing whatever it is that we're seeing wherever we happen to be. And then we come back and we're gonna cook out, we're gonna grill out, um, we're gonna hang out at the camper some, but not a lot, to be honest. So we don't, we don't bring a whole lot of things to like make our campsite our home. I mean, how often do we actually even put a tablecloth down? <laughs> Honestly, not that much. We really don't. All right. And so we also have bin number two. And so with bin number two, again, it's kind of odds and ends stuff. Um, we do have, like, it's a lot of fire, fire stuff. So we have some fire starters, including some lint, cardboard, that kind of stuff. Some fire starters. This is a shovel to, for our fire um, to do things in the fire. We have a, a little hatchet that we'll use to chop or split wood. Um, this is an interesting one. You can see that. That is an Arcan saw. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> um, and I'll show you this. I'll maybe do a video on this thing later. It's actually made locally uh, here nearby where we live. It's made in Gentry, Arkansas. This comes apart, makes an A-frame saw, basically. There's blades that are stored in here, um, and I can use this to saw wood if I need to. Um, odds and end things, some dry bags for canoeing. I got a fishing net in here. This is a trash bag for, for canoeing. And honestly, that's about it really. Have some, I really like shop towels for helping to clean up and stuff better than paper towels. They're a lot sturdier. And then we also have like this little, um, it's like a day pack kind of thing. It's a mesh, it's real lightweight and canoeing it's for great for the beach too i like to put beach. my shells in those yep that kind of stuff oh that's so much better so i will tell you that when, early on, one of the first purchases I made as soon when we got our little guy Max was I wanted a way to grill outside 
and we have used this volcano grill so much mm -hmm. we've used it a lot i like it because it is it's versatile that's the one thing when you're camping in a small camper you want things just like when you're backpacking i've done some backpacking you want multiple use things this can be used for multiple things um it it can be a gas grill, a charcoal grill, or a fire pit. So it's multi-use. Um, it's kind of heavy. It's probably about 25 pounds, um, and it's made out of stain. It's made out of steel, and uh, but it, it has served us really well. It's one of the very first purchases that I that I got. It can has a cover, so you can have it in an oven. You can just grill on top. It's small. It's great for two people. If you had more than that, it might be a little challenging, but uh, works great for us. So one of the other reasons that we like this volcano grill is just because of the size. So it's right at 19 inches, 19 inches across, and it's only about seven inches high. And so obviously if I'm looking at to fit in this space here, I need it to be right at or less than 28 inches by just a little over 10. And that was the challenge, was finding yeah. a grill. Finding, finding a grill or finding something that would fit back here. This one definitely fit the bill. It's multi-use. It comes with this comes with this case that has lasted us a few years. I mean, it's definitely, it's coming apart some at the seams and that kind of stuff, but it's lasted us pretty good so far. But I can just put it right in. I have it over here towards the back. On my ladder because again, I don't use my ladder that much. It makes it really easy to get to, it's really convenient. I can get to all of this stuff pretty easily. Also, we have a stool, in case, so that we don't have to get the ladder out. This also doubles as a step, in case our, the step to get in is a little high, if we have to jack the front end up, this becomes our step. A couple of other things that we carry, we do, we're old, so whenever we hike, <laughs> We're old. Whenever we hike, we do like to use hiking poles, and so I keep them in here when we're on our what when we're on our way. Normally, whenever I get to the destination, I'll put them in the in the back seat of the truck or in the back of the truck. But those go over on the edge, just over on the edge, um, and then so as you can see, we have these two. So we have some really uh, inside, inside the camper, and I guess right now actually inside the truck, we have two really small chairs mm -hmm. that are good in a pinch, but these are our comfy chairs. These are our, we're old and we need a really they're, good they're comfy chair. They're kind of chair. swing rocking chairs, kind of like hammock chairs. We got these at Sam's Club. I don't know that you can get them anymore because they were like 50 bucks, 49 bucks, I think. At 39. 39.99 at Sam's Club whenever we got them but I don't know that they're available anymore. I have actually seen them recently. Okay. So Online? I, at, no, at the store. Okay. And they had a child's version also. Huh. All right. But generally what we do, yeah, we'll just put those right on top of these green bins. And they'll go right in there on top. Just like that. All right, and then finally, we have our patio rug. So this is a rug, I think is, I believe we got this one at Lowe's. It's just, it's kind of a plastic. Yeah, plastic -y. Material, you can get them, I mean, you can get them at any RV store. This one's just a little different, it doesn't. I folded it in the past. I found out that this is probably the easiest way to do it. And it just, I will be able to put it right down the side here. And it goes almost all the way across. And right down. And I'll put the other side down. One of the other things that you may have noticed in here is we have, so in the little guy, this is the awning um, adapter where you can unscrew the awning. It's usually mounted on the back wall. I mounted it to the wood right up here just to make it a, real e a little easier for me. Because to the back wall, it was hard for me to get in and out. 
this is much easier for me to get in and out. And just in case you're at, wondering, this is our temperature sensor. We have a temperature sensor under the bed so we can kind of, and it, it uh, connects with the temperature sensor inside. So we have actually three. We have this one. I have one underneath where the water heater is, one in the box up front, and then of course the main one inside. So this is on the driver's side. You saw us unload the driver's side. Honestly, for the most of the driver's side stuff is set up and tear down. So what I mean by that is it's leveling stuff, water stuff, electrical stuff, everything that we need to get to when we're either setting up or breaking camp. That's it's on the driver's sides. Under, underside. There's some sewer fittings. Now remember my sewer hose is actually up here. So I actually keep my sewer hose up here in this in this box. But some of the fittings and other things I have in here. So just real quick, it's got some sewer hose fittings. It also has like a, a, a washout uh, washout hose so I can you know, wash it out because you certainly don't want to use your drinking water hose to wash out your sewer pipe. So, just like I said, just additional fittings and that kind of thing. This is a sealed, kind of a hefty box. And this, you wouldn't think this would fit through that opening, but I'll show you. It will fit in there. So, we have a couple of little, just kind of open little bins right in here. I couldn't tell you where we got them, to be honest. Um, but they sit side by side here. I've got Velcro on the bottom, so they're Velcroed to the floor, so they won't move. They're um, a Husky version, extra large stackable. So some of the things that we have in there, so we'll use these. This is a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter. So if I ever need to, this, this is a 30 amp rig. So if we ever get somewhere where we don't have 30 amp access, I can plug this into the 50, plug mine into the, plug my 30 amp adapter in there and it'll work just fine. So I have that in there never had to use it not once this one on the other hand is a 30 amp to 20 so this is just your regular household 20 amp service and it converts so I can plug my 30 amp into it and then plug just a regular extension cord or whatever and it won't give you 30 amp service but it'll certainly let you hook up and get power so I have that in there we also have one of these this is not <laughs> this is not a surge protector or anything like that all it is is a little meter that has little lights that'll tell you I plug it into the pedestal whenever we get to camp and it's one of the first things that I do before I plug in I plug it in it gives you a little light indicator if it's wired correctly or incorrectly that way it just gives you an idea of are you gonna are you at risk if you plug it in and then I usually plug it in look for my two yellow lights unplug it if it's good and plug in we have a, a built-in internal uh, power management system from Progressive Industries. So it's inline, hardwired. So I'm not really worried about it, but this just lets me have a little bit of peace of mind up front. So we have that, and we'll put all of those up front into those bins. Two other things that I'll put over here because I'm kind of out of the way. One of those is a bottle jack. Just if I've got a bottle jack that I can put up underneath. Um, so, so that if we need, need to jack it up, it's easy to jack up. So I'll usually put it, I haven't had to use it either, so I usually put it way back in the back. I haven't had to use it on the road, I have used it. A couple of, these are a couple of adapters with it. I'll put those back there. And then the other thing is this. Now, this is pretty cool actually. This is a, it's called a bump it. And what this is, is if you have the um, bike rack on the front um, of your little guy. So if you use the jacket uh, bike rack on your little guy and you're carrying bikes, and it has an adapter right here that has this big V-shaped that you pull in here, that's the bike rack. That adapter that fits in here can fit into here while this goes into your hitch and so you can use the bike rack adapter here with this little uh, bump it tool to carry it on the back of your car after you've disconnected from the trailer.
just gives you alternate again multi-use i can use this on the camper i can use it on with this on the car so this is an extension cord so this is a 25 foot 30 amp extended extension cord so you can take from there you know from your from your rig take the 30 amp and and it'll plug into there it'll plug into this side and then this one just plugs into the uh to the uh pedestal but it, I've only had to use it a couple of times. The normal uh, cord that we have is, is a 25 foot cord, so it's only when you're more than 25 feet away, which honestly, if I have electric, I'm usually pretty close. So having uh, 25 extra feet, it works, but we really haven't had to use it a whole lot. But we have it in case we need it. Um, then this Sidewinder, this is just the little Sidewinder Camco sewer support hose, sewer hose support. And I just put it in there. It usually doesn't, it's not contaminated because it usually doesn't, it doesn't touch anything. But I'll put it all, so I'll put all of that in that one bin just because that's the bin that I probably use the least. Then we've got a leveling block. I've got a little room up here, so I usually just put it right up here. That would be other leveling block this is like tetris <laughs> you're trying to fit as much as you can in a little bit of a space as you as you can so you can see i've just kind of put it right in there now what i have big open space it's mostly for water and the water sewer and the leveling blocks and I'll be honest with you, I've got this one whole bin that has practically nothing in it. And so we do have a watering can so that if I need to go get an extra five gallons of water, I can do that. Um, we have a bucket, we have a couple of spouts, those kinds of things. That's, that's basically all, I mean, and so what I would tell you is I like these bins. They, they have a seal around them. They're weather shield boxes. They work pretty well. Ziploc, so it uh, helps keep moisture out and those kinds of things. This one's really light. I have it in case I need it for anything else, mm -hmm. but I don't use it a lot. So that, that's why it goes way back in the back because I don't generally need it, but I have an extra space, extra box in case I do. All my hose stuff I have in here. Um, so I have two hoses. Have a, both of these are zero, those zero, uh, zero G hoses. I have a 25 foot and a 50 foot with several different adapters and that kind of thing. Honestly, in most cases, in most campgrounds, 25 foot is just fine. I've had a few spots where water was more than 25 feet away and I, have, I could just use the 50 by itself. If it got even further away, I could use both. Or if there's a, a spigot really far away that you just need to fill your tank or whatever mm -hmm. then you can combine them and you have 75 feet total but normally i don't need that much um so we whenever we set up camp for our water we usually set up at the water at the water spigot with this y and on this side i've got my um pressure regulator so this is this will be the water that feeds into the to the camper but sometimes and many a lot of times i just need water and i don't want to disconnect it so i have this on there so that if we have it and need it I can connect this guy and I can connect it to that side and then we can use it and spray and clean ourselves off or whatever we need to do in addition to that there's a couple of little things this thing is called a water uh, a water bandit for the this is where you can uh, you can attach it to like something where the threads are stripped or whatever and you can't get it you can't screw on a hose this is good now it won't work under pressure it'll work to help you fill up your tank but you don't want to keep it like you don't want it to pressurize because it'll just blow off of it blow off of the spigot and then this is really good too this just goes to the end of your hose gives you a shut off valve and then just fits right into your water um, into your water tank um, uh, input so you can just you can fill it up and then turn it off whenever you're done it's, it uh, just makes it really easy so anyway that's kind of everything that we have in our water containment and our water in our water uh, bin 
Now, piece. it's really important to keep hoses in storage containers, isn't it? I mean, so here's the thing what I would say about that. I mean, whenever you're, whenever I'm storing the, whenever I'm storing this, whenever we get back from a, whenever we get back from a trip, I always open this up. I air them out. I make sure that they don't because otherwise the mildew and mold and get nasty. So whenever you get back from your trip, for sure, I don't leave them in these waterproof containers or else it would be very stinky, mildewy, moldy, mm -hmm. all that. So, but yeah, I mean, I like it because it protects them, keeps them, keeps them, you know, um, Clean, pretty much pretty clean keeps them off the floor in there keeps them from getting the inside floor wet as it's as you know as I put a wet hose it's in here all the water is contained in here we had a hose that froze once. yeah we did we were in uh, Colorado I guess last year and um, we it got it dipped down or actually it was I guess it was Texas it was Texas we were in Amarillo and it uh, it got down into the 30s and we didn't know, I mean, below freezing, and we didn't know it, and it, it froze. And so we had a frozen um, uh, water hose that still had water in it. I, had, I ended up just putting it in here, or maybe it was the empty one, and just so it would contain the water. Yeah. We got it in there as much as we could. Because we had to leave. <laughs> we had to leave, yeah. We do a lot of one night, overnights, maybe two or three nights. But uh, because we move so fast, like I said, we don't, we don't have a lot of time to... Uh, I don't have a lot of time to wait around on things like that. So then this one just fits right in there like that. There goes Kitty. <laughs> All right, so very carefully, it'll fit. Just like that. Tetris. Just like Tetris. <laughs> then the last couple of things that we have are some of these leveling blocks. And we will just put them in there, get those out of the way. And like I said, man, everything kind of fits just perfectly. Now, I have a little bit of open space here and in this bin. That's where my my uh, chocks, my wheel chocks and my uh, tongue lock and everything like that go in here whenever I'm towing. And obviously whenever I'm not towing, this is my sway bar and I can put it in there as well and it kind of alternates depending upon if we're towing or stopped. And that's it. And that's everything in our basement. So there's our walkthrough. Yes, thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions about anything that we went over today, or if you have uh, any questions about where we purchase things, we will try to get back to you. We'll post links to what we can in the description box below. But thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the road. See ya.